All right, I'm back. We're on page 275. We're still talking about limits in, at infinity. Um, at infinity means that x is going to infinity, um, as opposed to limits that become infinity, which typically is x is approaching some constant. And as you do that, the function value shoots up or shoots way down, vertical asymptotes, basically. Um, so limits at infinity, if they are constant and they are finite, are going to be your horizontal asymptotes. So uh, they're really important. That's why we spend a lot of time on them. So let's take a look at this. So these problems that we're about to do are pretty unique in that they never get easier. There's, there's not going to be some super secret way that I'm going to show you in like a month of doing these that like takes all the work out of it. These will always be the same amount of work. To be honest with you, the previous limits that we did at some point in your life, someone, probably me, but who knows, will show you a different way to do them, which does sometimes speed it up. But for these, it's this or nothing, pretty much. So two facts that we need to remember are that um, the square root of x squared is defined to be the absolute value of x, right? So the reason for that is if you had, woo, if you had the square root of like negative 3 squared, that's not going to be negative 3, right? Because square root, it, so this is really the square root of 9. And then the square root of 9 is 3. And what's its relationship to negative 3? It's the opposite of negative 3, or the absolute value of negative 3. Um, so you have to watch out for that. That absolute value is super important. Then I just basically use this property. The absolute value of x is defined to be x when x is greater than or equal to 0. Right? The absolute value of 15 is 15. And it's the opposite of x when x is less than 0. So in the previous thing that I just did, uh, the absolute value of negative 3 is the opposite of negative 3. Right? So it's x when x is greater than or equal to 0, the opposite of x when x is less than 0. So we're going to use that, and we're going to combine it with this idea. So this idea is like pretty clear, but not super clear to people sometimes. So as x approaches infinity, I would make the claim that x is obviously positive, right? If you're going to infinity, then like 50, 100, 1,000, like these are positive numbers. x is definitely positive, which means that we can replace, uh, let's see, I want to highlight this, highlight this. We can always replace the absolute value of x with x. Sorry, I got like lost in a thought halfway through there. Um, we can always do that. And then if x is going to negative infinity, so if we're headed toward negative infinity, we can always replace the absolute value of it. So negative infinity, like negative 10, negative a billion, negative a trillion, more and more negative, definitely negative numbers, which means we can replace the absolute value of x with the opposite of x. So these are a big deal. And we're going to use them like right now as we solve this problem. So we want to find the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x plus 2 over this weird radical. So this is a technique that you'll use when you're combining limits with radicals. So go back and review that page where we um, factored the highest logical power of x out of a radical. Um, that's going to come up here. So let's see. I see um, radical 8x squared minus 5x plus 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the highest logical power of x from the radical. So I'm going to get, make this a little bigger, uh, I get equals, don't forget your limits. Oh my god. Oh, we're not going to negative infinity. We're going to infinity. So I'm not going to touch this yet. Over. I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the thing, right? So it's going to be, uh, should I show work on this? I'll show the work. So, oh, no, I didn't want to turn the corner. I just want to go like this. Okay. Take x squared, and I get 8 minus 5 over x plus 4 over x squared, and then close that. So I took x squared out of everything in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor, I'm going to, I'm going to use the property that like radical a times b is radical a times radical b, but I'm also going to uh, say that the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. Limit as x approaches infinity. Still not touching this. 3x plus 2 over. So this will be the absolute value of x. And then the square root of 8 minus 5 over x 
plus four over x squared. The thing I like about this, it's like basically the same work every time, um, but it's like so definitive. Like there's, there aren't really questions to like, like what should I do? Like once you know what to do, it's what you will do. Um, like how I subtly zoomed there while I was talking. Uh, all right, let's see. So now I'm gonna say, it's the limit is x plus infinity because there are still x's, so you're still writing limit. Still not touching this. Over, all right, I'm gonna change color, probably only for this step because it's gonna be super annoying. Uh, since we're going to positive infinity, this is going to become just x. If we were going to negative infinity, it would become the opposite of x. Right, so that's where that comes into play. And that's the only change that I'm gonna make, but it's a huge change. Eight minus five over x plus four over x squared. Okay, so now I'm going to divide through by the highest power of x in the denominator. So the highest power of x in the denominator is x to the first. So I'm gonna divide everything I see by that. But, so I'm gonna have to remember this, I guess, because can't see it. Okay, so x is still going to infinity. All right, three x over x is three. Two over x is just two over x. In the denominator, I'm just dividing by x once. So I'm either going to divide x by x or I'm gonna divide the radical thing by x. Just which of those makes more sense to do? Obviously you wanna divide the x by x. So I'm going to be left with radical eight minus five over x plus four over x squared. And now this is just thing two, like a lot. So I'm gonna use it. This, I feel like I write really small, but like I, I can't tell. I should like print one of these out and see. Do I have a printer? I guess I have access to a printer. Um, all right, if I go to infinity, I'm gonna get three and then like plus zero over radical eight. Three over radical eight, that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna say just like, uh, because we should do it, because this is why you find the limits, I'm gonna say therefore, y equals three over radical eight is a horizontal asymptote or an HA, depend, depends on where you fall in that, that argument of, uh, let's call it f of x is 3x plus 2 over radical 8x squared minus 5x plus 4. So we just found a horizontal asymptote. So it has a horizontal asymptote at 3 over radical 8. Okay, let's do the next problem, which is going to look really similar. And honestly, when I do it on the whiteboard, I usually just scroll. Uh, so the problem is up there and then I like erase some things or add some things and I'm like, you know, keep up if you want to take notes. Uh, but in this case, I'm gonna have to write it. I could copy and paste it, keep traditions alive, uh, but instead I'm gonna do it again. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna do this whole problem again. Limit as x approach is negative infinity. Super related. In fact, all of the work is gonna look exactly the same. So much so that I'm gonna jump right now to the absolute value of x. I'm a radical. So see previous problem if you're not sure why that happened. Eight minus five over x, four over x squared. Okay, here we go. Limit as x approaches negative infinity. All right, so that's a big deal. So now what I'm gonna do, well actually nothing changed yet, hold on. I got excited, I jumped the gun, hold on. Uh, false start, three x plus two. Now I'm gonna get excited. All right, so what are we dealing with? We're dealing with the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So negative numbers for sure. Negative a billion, negative a trillion, negative quadrillion, like, I don't know. Um, and also, woo, also we have an absolute value. So because we're going to negative infinity and the x values are negative, we can replace the absolute value of x with negative x, right? 
that's a big step. You got to make sure you understand that because that's kind of the key to doing this whole thing. And then once we get here, I'm just going to copy this again uh, and not remember what it is. So it's eight minus five over X plus four over X squared. Some people play like uh, a little fast and loose with these, uh, the five over X and the four over X squared. You shouldn't, you should be very precise in everything that you do mathematically. However, because you're going to infinity, if you accidentally write like uh, plus five over X instead of minus five over X, the limit is still gonna be zero. So you're still going to get the correct answer numerically, but you want your work to be accurate. So like, don't, don't do that is what I'm saying. All right, here, we're gonna divide everything we see by the highest power of X in the denominator. So this work goes back to looking very similar negative infinity, so we get three plus two over x over just the radical, eight minus five over x plus four over x squared. Maybe I should explain that a little more. Give me a, give me a second, let me finish this. Um, so, oh, I, I left out a negative sign, oh my God. The whole point of this is that I divided negative x by x and I got negative one, so there's still a negative sign there, okay. Now, if we take our limit, should I just, I'm going to stay in this color, equals negative three over radical eight. So look at that. We get just kind of the opposite thing, right? And so uh, I'm going to say, therefore, y equals negative three over radical eight is horizontal asymptote of our original function of f of x is 3x plus 2 over radical whatever, 8x squared minus 5x plus 4. Boom. Okay, let me explain one thing briefly that I should have explained like back when I did it the first time. If you have, so this is from the denominator. Uh, where's, let me, where's the first time this came up? I guess it was like here, right? So whew, just trying to zoom to the right place here. Been using zoom a lot lately, to be honest, like every day, tons. Uh, if you have a times b divided by a, that's either a over that. Oh my gosh, what happened there? Somehow I like, oh my God, I can't erase it. What? Okay, it's gone. I don't even know if you were seeing that. I could not erase that. It was just like this ghost A that turned all like crumpled up and wouldn't go anywhere. Okay, A over A. A times B over A Whew. is either A divided by A times B or A times B over A, but it is not equal to A over A times B over A. So that's the property that I'm using there when I'm gonna divide through by the highest power of X in the denominator, the denominator is a product. So I'm divide that product by the highest power of X in the denominator. So I get to choose, either I'm gonna divide X by X or I'm gonna divide the radical by X. I know I explained it a little bit the first time, but uh, thinking back while I was doing these, like people always have a little bit of a problem with that. So I wanna go back and make sure I kind of explain that again. Uh, we use it several times. So just to, to review it, to make sure you've got it down, this is one of those like memorize uh, as soon as possible type things. Let me highlight around the edges of the box. Kind of like this. It's a very subtle, it's like a ghost highlighter. I like that. Um, the function y equals f of x has a horizontal asymptote under the following conditions. If the limit is x approaches infinity of f of x equals k, and k is a constant, then y equals k is a horizontal asymptote. If you go to infinity, the limit is x approaches negative infinity of f of x is equal to k then y equals k is a horizontal asymptote. Limits at infinity, when they are finite, are horizontal asymptotes. That's part of why we wanna find them. Horizontal asymptotes are super important, right? Like when things are growing over time, you wanna know what the horizontal asymptote is because that's where it's finally gonna like level off. Uh, it's been in the news a lot lately, depending on when you're watching this. Um, that kind of thing, super important. We're always interested, like what happens as x goes to infinity? In mathematics, we're interested in what happens as x goes to negative infinity, but like less so in the real world. Um, the math is the real world. Uh, and then if, so this is like a unique thing. So uh, let's put, 
put some stars around this. If you are dealing with a rational function, then the limit to infinity and negative infinity will always be the same. So if you go to positive infinity and you get 15 as your limit, then going to negative infinity, you're also going to get 15. That's only true for rational functions. It could happen on non-rational functions, but it almost never does. Like for example, up here, this is not a rational function. It's not a polynomial divided by a polynomial. We got two different limits. So if you don't have a rational function, be extremely skeptical and go to infinity and negative infinity, just to make sure, just see what's happening. Make sure you're not making some kind of textbook error. You want to avoid textbook errors. You always want to make unique new errors that no one has ever made before because those are the easiest to kind of like fix. Um, all right, so that's this whole page. I'm going to stop here, come back in the next video, do more notes. Hope you're finding this helpful. I will see you then. And uh, that's it.